Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Parabindarjit Singh from IT for Change, which works on the internet, global governance, and other similar issues. Parabindar, good to have you with us. Thank you, Prabhu. A lot of issues have come up in the past regarding internet governance, the fact that the US controls the root server, the fact that ICANN is really the one which decides the registry of domain names, is really located in the US or largely US based, the domain registers. Do you think this is a big issue for people in the third world or countries in the third world? Yes and no. It by itself may not be that big an issue because people do really think that well, it doesn't matter, I get my domains all right. At this point of security, nations think there is an issue because the critical infrastructure has certain choke points which are controlled by one country. And essentially, ICANN is under uh, contract with the Department of Commerce and, well, it therefore is really subject to its control entirely. However, for me, the, the principle that U.S. controls it is a bigger problem and it, it started a kind of a, a practice and a kind of model of privatized governance in the whole internet regime uh, which extends to much and many more areas which are closer to our, our lives and uh, influences uh, our day to day lives much more. And therefore for me the problem is that we are now into an age where US or a couple of countries friendly to the US control an infrastructure and and along with privatized uh, realms uh, of uh, governance. So yes, it, it is a it is an issue and it is a huge issue. Developing countries have been consistently been arguing that there should be a, a system under the UN or a new system which is democratic globally, which starting with the critical internet resources, which is the kind of things you're talking about, ICANN, etc., uh, should not control the internet, but govern in, it in public interest. And I think there is a huge difference between the two, especially at perception level, because the moment you talk about global governance, people are afraid somebody is out to control it, kind of, you know, limit people's freedoms. But, but the, the, one part of it is really the fact that the U.S. government can shut down all every site in the country by just stopping it if it wants to. Dot .in. If, for instance, US wants it, can stop all dot .in sites in that sense. It's, a, it's actually a it's slightly complicated issue, but you know what happens? Internet would not really... Because much of the traffic moves within the system. And as long as the addresses are resolved internally, you still will have an internet which will keep on degrading. Uh, so the fact is internet is so complex that nobody can really tell you what will happen. But yes, there are key choke points where influence can be exercised in critical times that can be problematic. It is rumored that just before the Iraq war, dot .iq or whatever is the Iraq's domain was pulled out. Uh, so yes, there are those fears. So fear, so this is one part of it. Yes. The physical threat of yeah. degrading a country's internet infrastructure by being able to stop the domain, mm -hmm. all the domains because the root servers in the US is only one part yeah, of it. Yeah. The second part of it we're referring, is really the privatized governance of the internet, uh, if you will, mm -hmm. is the fact that this entire uh, internet, uh, shall we say, real estate which is created, which is what the domains really are, the wealth of that flows all into certain companies in the United States. It, would, wouldn't that also be a major issue? It's, it's a huge issue. The fact that the wealth completely goes to certain countries and Moving from what was the model of internet as it was created, it was a public model. It was an open infrastructure which was governed in public interest, even if we call ICANN kind of a non-profit in public interest, where different people could create applications and they would link up. We have even gone worse than that. Right now, internet is a few big applications. Once you most of the people who are on the internet are within private spaces of a few applications. This was not there like six years or seven years back. You were still on the internet and then there was a problem that who governs the internet and US has disproportionate power but we have gone into times when actually people say what's the big about uh, domain names because while you're inside Facebook space or inside Google space, it, resolutions take place by Google's architecture, not by the internet's domain name architecture. 
and increasingly uh, young people have mobiles where they only do Facebook and Google. Increasingly mobiles are being sold, telecom companies are selling packages where for a certain amount you can only have Google and Facebook and, and perhaps one or two things, Twitter. And you really are inside those private domains. So you, you're going into worse directions. And when you are in those private domains, obviously it's simply the company's policy which controls and governs you. So effectively two sets of issues. One is the creation of the real estate which is privately owned, one part of it. The second part of it, what you're discussing right now, is the fact that even you are becoming now captured in some sense by large corporations within whose application. I call it really the are. mall mall model. Earlier it was the public street, the shopping shops were on the street. So you had private spaces on a public system. And but now increasingly it's a mall where the, the shops are inside uh, inside a private space and that's what is happening to the So you internet. basically have your Facebook account, so you are on the Facebook and the Facebook account therefore is what you are, not the domain. You're not the, on the internet. On the, really. the, I mean, you're not on a public yes. internet. You are inside that space for all and you're in private space. They can t do whatever. Now, the, well, this is one part of it, but this seems to be developing in a way that we meaning people in the third world, countries, people, whatever it is. We don't seem to be able to do anything about it at the moment. Are there countervailing measures that can be taken or people are taking? Are there moves against it? Because all that seems to be happening is a kind of isolation or policing model by a state that, well, we will not let you do ABCD things on this uh, internet space or we will prohibit some of these balls, for instance. Now, is there something else that can develop in this? Yes, so you, you're coming to the key question that increasingly internet dominates good parts of our social, economic, political, cultural lives. Are they subject to good rules, regulations, public interest based governance systems because we need to be safe, we need to be protected, we need to be protectively and positively enabled in many ways the typically public functions. So what happens in these spaces? So right now, no, nothing is happening. And, and there are a couple of reasons for that. One, technology is so fascinating. You're getting so much. You really don't want to do anything at all since you're getting a lot. You say, like, wait, we're getting it. So why would you interfere in that? You know, goodies, you're getting daily new goodies. You start getting a new mobile phone. You discover new things that you never thought were possible. And therefore, the system is working. And it is working beyond people's expectations. So if you try to convince somebody in that, kind of a situation that, you know, do you want to do something? He says, why? Why should I do? Novelty of the things he's seeing overcomes the underlying problems. Novelty and, and you're actually getting new goodies and they, they, they're useful as well. It's not that they're just novel in that, you know, in a, that stimulating manner, but many of them are very useful. Google gives you Google applications. Google gives you a document which you can do online rather than offline. There are problems, structural problems with it, but it's so convenient. You don't want to do anything about it. I mean, I get a model of, I saw a cartoon long back and I vaguely remember it's about two chimpanzees who are getting a lot of foods and they're choosing what to eat and strategizing and taking it. At the same time, a golden edged cage is being built around them, but they're completely ignorant or you don't want to look at it because they are looking at the goodies being made possible. So in the same sense, we are getting the goodies. We are not looking at the structural changes which are happening around us which in a long term would create, create problems for us. And that becomes a governance issue. It's not an issue which each of us would separately ever you know, want to do anything about, but as a society, as a collective, somebody has to take the responsibility uh, to do something about it, and that, that's not happening. But when that this really is a larger issue, that internet that we have created is really outside domestic governmental control, in various, except perhaps the United States, where the ICANN is, where the Google, Facebook uh, companies are, and so on. For most, it's really outside domestic governance control, and we have really no international structure to either govern or regulate the internet, except the laws of the United States. Is that really an uh, issue that we need to address? Yeah, that's, that's the central issue. I think when people have critiqued economic globalization, and then you look at what should be done, and any thinker I really, you probe any thinker on that, then finally person says this, that you can't have a unified economy without having some kind of unified polity. That's, that's a simple thing you have to go towards. If you want to take the advantage of being together economically, you have to give up certain 
power uh, to a collective which is global and therefore have to have a polity and otherwise that wouldn't work. And that's many times truer in the internet where internet is inherently global. It's not global because the pieces got put together but it was global of which pieces we see uh, from our local uh, spaces. This being inherently global for me the proposition is simple. If you want to take the advantage of being a globally connected society, if you really like it and everybody seems to like it, uh, then you need to move forward and say we need some governance. But the problem immediately comes that people think that that would be a typical UNH governance where certain authoritarian countries dominate and it's you know race to the bottom looking for controls and the governments would agree with the to a high degree of control over the internet which nobody seems to want. So you are stuck there really. Effectively we have to think about new structures of governance, cooperative regulation if you will for the future which is the network society and that is really the crux of the issue. The nation state structure is no longer capable of really addressing issues like this and by default at the moment it gives almost the sole power of governance to the United States where it really at the moment the hub of the internet seems to be. Yes, theoretically that is what we need to do. But and our organization is struggling at the global level to see what actually can you do. But when you really come to what actually you can do, you need to be more pragmatic. You need to move from A to B and there has to be path from A to B. You cannot be at B because that is theoretically the best thing to do. And I agree internet creates a new public and therefore there is a new public governance system which is the present one which is a combination and putting together of those number of countries which we have is not adequate. Once theoretically we agree to that we still have to move from what we have now and have a path of progression towards that and we have given a lot of suggestions to have a new kind of system where you would have intergovernmental system the first time you have some people who are from outside and what powers they would have, what soft powers would they uh, exercise then there is an institution called UN Internet Governance Forum which, which is just a place where people can come and talk. We have said that this should be empowered in a certain manner which gives policy directions but not policy outcomes which then should be something else. So we we'll have to look at new institutional possibilities. Now people accept the theoretical point but once you have to start then you have to make trade-offs and people are not ready to make trade-offs. Not making trade-offs comes the mother question of all the political economy question. The political economy question is has two sides to it. One is that the rich countries like the US even when they know that certain ways internet is functioning is not good for their domestic public interest but it is so good for their companies that and the companies give them so much that they are ready to keep their eyes shut or proactively connive with those companies which is I think almost a, I mean understandable domestic compulsion because when you do not have a global system then every country would work for their short term gains and for US they know that many things about intellectual property they know is not good for the people, people do not like it but they know that they are earning so much money. The new model of global domination is based on technical architecture and on IP, the combination of two and therefore technical architecture for them is important and that is built by Google and Facebook. So one, the big countries who are most sophisticated in their policy analysis of forward planning, looking at what would be the public interest are not eager to you know put public they're, interest. They're private interest of their large corporations over, the over and and they do earn so much money globally for them that probably even they in some ways the people even may be better because they have more money being well, earned from outside. Well yeah. it is a debatable issue yeah, but it's a debatable basically, issue. I'm just saying, basically yeah, yeah. what you are raising is that for instance the pharmaceutical companies interest override the interest of the people for public health mm -hmm. like in the United States. This could also be a similar example. Yes, yes. But the bottom line is that we have two problems. I, I would say the second one. One uh, I was saying two parts. One is that the big countries who have big role in shaping global forums have this, this issue and second is that the dominant uh, forces increasingly in developing countries is that middle class which has a new confluence of interest, outlooks and therefore politics which is much more prominent than 
the majority of people's politics there. It is even more prominent on the internet. So this, uh, this group which should have brought the alternative politics is of course not going to bring it because its interest matches the dominant model. They are more liberal, they are more in afraid of control aspect rather than on the socio-economic issues. So because of this, the two factors, things are not going in the direction they should go. So Barbinder, to sum up really two central questions that we have to address. When is where do we want to go and what is to be part, the path to be followed. And I think this is something that we'll have to work out over the next few years. Otherwise, we are going to get in a situation, as you've outlined, that it's not going to be the interest of the public, either defined in a larger public interest or even the new public, as you were, you were talking about. Thanks a lot. This has been a very interesting discussion and we hope to have you more as you go further in the trajectory and towards the end point, whatever that might be. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for being